uh, let's start the uh, the technical content of today's uh, the uh, topic. So first, uh, the today's topic, I will uh, discuss about the general attention-based ASR uh, with uh, the encoder decoder network. And then uh, we'll move to the uh, latest technology called the transformer. Uh, and I will also explain about tips uh, of uh, how to make uh, attention-based ASR work. So let's start uh, from our usual speech function pipeline. And uh, this time, uh, this, uh, the uh, the pipeline uh, covers uh, attention-based ASL, uh, which is uh, the, the both uh, acoustic modeling lexicon and language modeling part. By the way, some method could also cover feature extraction part, but generally not so uh, the, the, uh, the common uh, because uh, feature extraction, uh, the uh, MSCC or logmail filter bank is good enough for many of the applications. Okay, so let's uh, recap uh, the, the, what is the input and what is the output. So uh, the, it's uh, the happens uh, the everywhere in my lecture, but I just want to make sure uh, because the input output relationship is very important. So in this uh, lecture, uh, the speech recognition is formulated as a PW given law, okay? And the W uh, is a token sequence, which can be character uh, or uh, a word uh, or BP uh, the token, uh, depending on our applications. Uh, and uh, the I use the index J, okay? And the speech input observation is generally written as the, the, the O, and the, the sequence uh, is actually represented as a large T. And then the, uh, the, the problem is that these two sequences are very different, especially lengths are different. So we cannot use the normal uh, neural network. And then a uh, sequence to sequence modeling is a solution uh, to deal with uh, these uh, the different uh, the, the input and output uh, problems. By the way, there is a, just one note about it, uh, it is a little bit complicated, but today, uh, due to the simplicity, I decided this notation. This T can be after the downsampling. So please remember that we usually have a downsampling through the CNN or whatever. And then actual uh, lengths can be actually shorter, but to uh, avoid a lot of kind of a T a notation uh, in our lecture, I use the, uh, the, uh, the same T and the large T for both uh, the, the original speech features and the downsampled feature. Hopefully it, you, you're not confused, but the, if you are confused, please uh, ask me the clarification. I'm happy to answer. Okay, so uh, the, the how to obtain a PW given no? And we spend a lot of time uh, to uh, the make a kind of a a uh, long way to finally uh, replacing PW given law as a neural network model, right? Uh, we use the, uh, the product rule, some rules, conditional independence assumption to factorize each of the model. And then we further factorize each of the model and also introduce the, uh, the, the uh, state, state, HMM state sequence. And then acoustic model is actually represented uh, by a neural network uh, based on the, uh, the observation uh, given state. And the uh, neural network language model is also starting from this factorization and then uh, making a, a product rule. Okay, so next, uh, the, uh, how to derive uh, attention-based ASR. Luckily, we only use the product rule, uh, probabilistic chain rule, that's it. So this is very simple. Uh, this also means that we don't have a conditional independent assumption. That's actually limit the model load, right? But the, the theoretically, uh, attention-based SR actually doesn't have this kind of property. And then we can actually add, 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 add using the exact uh, problem of solving 
uh, the speech recognition uh, without constraint by the conditional independence assumption. So this is by the one reason that I was actually very excited about our, about our attention-based data. Uh, I thought that I cannot escape from the conditional independence assumption. And then I first read this other uh, direction. I was very actually uh, impressed. And this is a way uh, for us to do that. So many people actually uh, the have uh, different opinions of uh, the moving to the uh, attention-based SR. Well, one people is just you know the making it simple. One people just think that it is a uh, better performance. One people may think that it is you know uh, computationally very efficient. And for me, uh, the the reason I, I decided to uh, the think about this as the next direction is that the, the this kind of elegant form that does not require any approximation. Okay, so uh, the now our focus is this right side equation, uh, PWJ given W one to J minus one all. So uh, this uh, right side is actually first consider the history uh, of the uh, a token sequence and then also conditioned by observation. And uh, the uh, last time I uh, discussed that uh, actually this uh, uh, the conditioned by history is modeled by a uh, language model. And the, uh, we can view that this one is just have an observation condition, that's it. And the question is how to make this observation condition. So this is actually sequence, right? Uh, the one to T lengths of the sequence. So uh, how we model uh, this one uh, in the uh, the other, other condition uh, so that we can deal with it. The initial approach uh, is that we converting this sequence as a fixed length vector like 1024 dimensional vector or 20, uh, 48 dimensional vector, regardless of the length. First, how to extract this kind of a feature? There are a lot of ways to do it, but the, 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 more, the, the beginning of the period, the, the people found that this is the, the one of the most effective way. We just using the LSTM to sweep the all the data. Uh, this is bidirectional. And then uh, this uh, means that the sweep in the, uh, the, the uh, normal direction and getting the hidden vector of the last T stamp, T time stamp data. And we do the same thing on the opposite side. Uh, by uh, the, the opposite direction and uh, making the, uh, the last time stamp in the, uh, the opposite direction, which is the, the initial time stamp uh, in the uh, the, uh, the original uh, representation. These two information actually capture the entire sequence information. And then using this other condition of the vector. So this is uh, the just a fixed length length. So we can just attach uh, the, uh, this, uh, the, the language model part. Again, without this observation, oh, this is just a language model. And then uh, we just are uh, making this as a condition to the language model. And how to make the condition? One approach is that using this vector to be the initial state of the LSTM. And then uh, the, the others are actually derived by the uh, language model. Uh, LSTM uh, equation, uh, that's it. By using that, we can actually represent this form as a neural network. It's a little bit uh, the cross approaches, uh, but the, suppose uh, LSTM can do the greater job, uh, we could actually assume that this can be working to some extent. And this approach 
of first using the uh, the, the uh, BLCM or whatever some new, some neural network to extract the high level information in the input. This component is called the encoder network. And then given this uh, encoder information to generating the uh, the uh, output information, this part is called the decoder network. And uh, how to connect this one? I use this other HT as an example, but there are a lot of ways to actually connect this one uh, other than uh, the uh, just using the fixed vector approaches. So by doing that, we actually are generating the uh, the output sequence uh, given the observation, entire observation as a condition, and then uh, the learning the, uh, the language generation uh, based on the language model. Uh, and so on. And just I want to note that last time we also introduced, but just to make sure that SOS here uh, means the, uh, the start of sentence. And the EOS here uh, means the uh, end of sentence. And especially this uh, end of sentence is very important. Without that, we don't know where when uh, we stop the, uh, uh, the text generation part. So as soon as we got to the end of sentence symbol, we actually stop to generate some other model. And then we can make it other sentence. Okay, so this is the, uh, the, the, uh, the one uh, possible approach of uh, making the end-to-end uh, -end, uh, ASR work uh, with a sequence-to-sequence -sequence problem. However, uh, this approach actually uh, the has uh, several issues. First, this approach, regardless of the input feature, like which is very long or very short, uh, we just converting this information to the fixed vector, this one. So this actually losing the relationship of the input and the output information. It can be encoded in the uh, LSTM. And if we checking the LSTM set and so on, probably we might uh, the, the analyze uh, the which input uh, the affect to the uh, which output and so on. But in general, uh, this is very difficult to analyze since already this uh, the, the sequence information is packed to the fixed length information. And another issue is they are very limited to what I mentioned. For example, regardless of the, uh, the input length, we just are converting it to 1024 or 2048 uh, vector dimen uh, dimensional vector. So it might be working if the sentence uh, the input feature is short. But if the input uh, the, uh, the feature is very long, Probably this fixed length vector is not good enough to represent uh, the, the, uh, the variations of uh, all input feature. So this is uh, the, actually one of the issue, uh, even in the uh, original uh, the neural machine translation uh, uh, P, uh, the, uh, the, the topic that the sequence to sequence uh, that was uh, developed. And the uh, next uh, generation of the encoder decoder architecture is actually try to solve the problem of this alignment property. And how to do it is that we actually try to get some condition of the hidden state vector. But again, uh, if this is uh, the depending on the uh, the time t, uh, we cannot well factorize it. However, this condition is depending on the same uh, index with the output. In our cases, are uh, the token. And then we could actually uh, the factorize this problem samely 
and we could have more fine resolution than, than just have a fixed vex, a fixed length vector. So from here to here, uh, please note that the index was changed. Previously, this is a large T, but it's more like I say the, uh, the uh, constant. Now it becomes variable, but it's not original input time. It's actually uh, the, the output token time. But this, I uh, want to have an information about observation. Okay, so uh, the, let's uh, the, the move to this one as the next our target. And talk about how to obtain this uh, the HJ. First, I want to uh, the, the discuss about the desired property of HJ. Of course, it should have some information uh, corresponding to the uh, corresponding to the token in the same uh, the, the, uh, the output uh, the position. And this uh, HJ should also have uh, information about the observation. And we want to hopefully have some relationship. And the last one, we are working on the end-to-end -end neural network. So this uh, the uh, correspondence alignment information should be differentiable. And then uh, the, the, we already actually used uh, this kind of function uh, as a one of the encoder, which is uh, attention mechanism. And we will use extension mechanism here, uh, not only making the relationship of the, uh, the, the input feature, uh, the feature itself, but try to make our, our relationship of the input and the output uh, based on the attention mechanism. So let's talk about attention mechanism. And the sum of the part is very similar to my previous lecture. But I will try to emphasize uh, which part is different. The first, uh, the attention part uh, will be uh, uh, the uh, using by the transform of the original encoder vector. So this is same as we introduced in the cellular attention. It just uh, the providing the uh, the some kind of uh, the representation that is uh, the originally from the output of the encoder. By the way, this HD is now output of the encoder. I use a BLSTM as an example, but it can be uh, the, the transformer or CNN or whatever. Okay. Okay. So uh, the the first step is to convert our encoder vector. To some transform, that is again we already uh, the uh, introduced. It can be some linear uh, hidden state back, uh, linear transform, or maybe some other uh, transformation, or even we might not need it if the dimension size is the same. And then again, this HT can be anything uh, came from the uh, encoder. But uh, again, my example, mostly using LSTM by following the history. And then uh, how to get this representation. Again, we just using the weighted sum, that's it. So this uh, the weighted sum are similar to what I introduced in the self-attention. This now has a, uh, the uh, the index of the output J and the index of the input T. Once we get this uh, the attention weight, we just get the uh, weighted sum, and then we can converting this uh, the uh, input information to the output information, okay? So as long as we have a nice uh, uh, the estimation of A, we could using this uh, weighted sum to simply convert 
the input information to the output. And this are the, the attention weights is actually a uh, very interesting property in these cases. For example, uh, given uh, the token, given sub token, for example, this token, if the attention weight is higher, uh, this other uh, the, the uh, figure, please uh, consider that the, the uh, solid line is uh, having a higher probability and a dot line uh, that means that lower probability. And this is kind of our uh, nature of the probability, right? And suppose we got this kind of attention weight, what does it mean? It's actually getting the weighted sum of the first few examples, and then uh, the getting the, uh, the, the uh, uh, context vector, uh, the vector uh, representation. And the next uh, the output token, if we also have an attention weight like this, for example, middle of this attention weight is higher and the lower is uh, smaller. And then we can also find the relationship of the input and the output through the attention weights. And the same for in the last part. So this actually can be uh, represented as the uh, uh, plot, this kind of plot. And this one, uh, the x-axis is uh, the observation, uh, input, and the uh, y-axis corresponding to the token. And this is actually a very typical example of the attention weights which actually shows are almost a diagonal. The reason, uh, and this is actually experimental result I got uh, from one of the speech recognition uh, approaches. And this means that the uh, most of the cases, uh, we just have a, uh, the monotonic uh, alignment property that I mentioned before in the uh, my lecture and this uh, alignment property is quite reasonable for speech recognition because input segment first part of the segment of the input of the speech should correspond to the first part of the token and the second part of the chunk chunk of the speech should correspond to the second token and so on we don't have a kind of a, uh, the uh, the uh, opposite uh, order uh, and so on, uh, as long as we solve the pure speech recognition problem. And this uh, the monotonic alignment is actually quite important. So uh, if uh, your algorithm uh, is working or not uh, in the attention-based ASL, my suggestion is to check this attention weight. And then uh, if this part is not diagonal, uh, probably your training or your model uh, is not working well. By the way, the other application, actually non-monotonic also happens. The famous application is machine translation, right? Since the, uh, the, the order of the correspondence can be uh, different uh, depending on the languages. SBO language and SOV language has a very different uh, the order. So in these cases, uh, we could actually allow the model to have a, a non-monotonic uh, mm -hmm. behavior. Even speech recognition, uh, several cases, we, for example, adding a lot of tags, uh, like a language uh, the tag or speaker identification tag or emotion tag, uh, in addition to the uh, original transcription. This is also a very uh, uh, well-known method to augment our speech recognition problem to also solve the speech recognition, speaker ID, language ID identification at the same time. In this case, the, whether you can put the, the tag in the first or last or middle uh, doesn't matter, right? 
And in this case, actually, uh, we could break the monotonic uh, the, 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 uh, assignment uh, the problem. Although uh, the, uh, the most cases, attention-based ASR is actually quite flexible uh, for this kind of uh, the, uh, the attention pattern. So attention-based approaches can actually still accept uh, this kind of uh, the uh, inserting uh, the special token uh, or even reordering uh, our output and so on. But uh, this part is actually also, yes. Great question. It's actually uh, the model was learned to behave like this. We didn't put this kind of constraint. But this means that we have to make the model to be well trained. So uh, there are a lot of uh, the applications, uh, advanced technique, techniques to actually force the monotonic alignment and so on. And I actually have a lot of trials uh, in this direction. But generally, the performance is not great. Although monotonic property itself is actually quite how to say uh, the nice property. So uh, the it's it's often used for TTS cases. TTS actually also using attention-based ASR, by the way. And then in this case, for them, uh, uh, the, the monotonic alignment is very uh, critical. So they actually often force the monotonic alignment property uh, even in the model side. But in speech recognition side, I don't know that the major systems are using the monotonic other constraint, except for the streaming, uh, because uh, the, it's usually degraded performance. But anyway, uh, the most of the cases in our lecture, attention-based ASL, we don't put the, the uh, model level at the monotonic constraint, but still asking the model to behave like this. Okay, and the uh, very good question. Thank you so much. And the, uh, this is actually one of the example of uh, wrong alignments. Um, this uh, the, actually the, the happens in the attention-based ASR uh, because uh, this is exactly uh, the, the, uh, related to your question. We did not explicitly make a monotonic constraint so that the model can actually also having this kind of a uh, patterns a lot. So in these cases, first speech recognition is uh, the working well to monotonically uh, the uh, predicting the speech recognition. But some cases, it's actually jumping to the uh, first frames and then attend here. And then the same kind of uh, phrases are repeated. And then same things have happened again here. And then uh, the same uh, phrases are, uh, that, uh, are repeated and finally finished. So actually uh, these cases are uh, three phrases uh, repeated again. And this causes the uh, significant uh, insertion uh, errors uh, in the system. Of course, the model is very well trained. We do not have this kind of issue, but especially in the beginning of the model, or if the amount of training data is small, this kind of the uh, wrong alignment issues are on, often happens in the attention-based ASR. So in the hard alignment method, like HMM, CTC, RN transducer, uh, this, kind of situation doesn't happen. Because you see that, that the tolerance is always from, uh, goes from the uh, light to light to top, right? There is no path to uh, goes from the, 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 the left and the down. So um, if we have a, a tolerance like a left to down, this, uh, the the, uh, the uh, repetition may happen, but other than that, 
uh, we actually uh, don't uh, have uh, this kind of uh, issues. So this is one of the most uh, critical issue of uh, attention-based ASR. So now the, uh, this year, we actually did not ask the student to have our implement attention-based ASR. But the previous year, we actually asked the student to implement attention-based ASR. And most people actually observed this issue. OK, I am talking about the attention weight. Given the attention weight to have this kind of analysis, OK? But I didn't talk about how to obtain the attention weight. And this is actually uh, the related to the previous uh, discussion, but it is more I want to uh, explain it with the, uh, the relationship with the information retrieval. And actually some of the words uh, come from the information retrieval in this attention-based approaches. So this approach is given token to get the similarity of the each input feature, right? After we get a similarity, similar to the uh, self-attention, we just normalize and make it, uh, making it as a probability. So the first, uh, the, the, the question uh, is how we get uh, this kind of uh, similarity. And this problem is actually quite uh, similar to the uh, information retrieval where we have a query and we have a key and we have some other uh, score function uh, to uh, the represent uh, uh, the uh, relevance. Uh, like for example, general uh, the, the, the information retrieval is to first select the uh, query and then throw it to the system. And then we get a kind of a key, right? each of the key, and then we can have the corresponding similarity score and the sorting it. And then we get the, the, uh, the uh, information retrieval result. And this relationship of the output input uh, is uh, quite a similar uh, formulation to the, uh, this other uh, information retrieval. So people can also uh, make this as a, a technical term based on that, which is the input uh, the uh, output of the token is represented as a query, and then a corresponding input that we want to make some relationship that is represented as key. Okay, uh, given this kind of uh, the token as a query, we apply to the each of the input information key and get the similarity score. And after we get a similarity score, if we want to make it as a probabilistic word, we can just use a softmax. Okay, so this approach is actually uh, realized uh, by uh, using the uh, inner product that I mentioned before in the self-attention. Uh, to uh, the make an inner product work, first, we convert both of the vector, uh, both of the, uh, the key and the query to be the same dimension. And then we can make an inner product, right? For the key, we just using the, uh, the conversion, uh, transformation, linear transformation, and then making it to the same dimension as the, uh, the query. And for the query, one, uh, the approach is to throw the token WJ, right? However, speech recognition problem or even machine translation problem is to actually predicting WJ uh, from the history. So in a practical situation, we actually cannot use this WJ as a query. So since we don't know which we want to predict. So instead, uh, the how to make a, a query 
people usually using the uh, history of the context. And then usually have a recurrent neural network or other cellular attention or whatever. Anyway, with that, we can get some kind of a context vector uh, of the, uh, the entire uh, the history uh, of the previous tokens. Using it as a kind of a, a the seed of the, uh, the query, and then uh, converting this one by using a linear transform. This is still has the information about token, right? Just uh, all the previous uh, the, 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 uh, the history of the token that has the information of the uh, token of the current. And then uh, the, once we have to this linear transform, now the, uh, the, we can make it the same dimension. And then we can use the inner product or anything to get the similarity score. And then after we get the similarity score, we normalizing it and then making it the weighted sum, uh, uh, the weight, attention weight. So this uh, the, the approach is uh, the, also called the cross attention or a source target attention because compared with the self attention cases, we have to care about the two modality, two different sequences. So uh, this cross means uh, try to kind of connect the, uh, the, the two modality. Or uh, this two modality is usually having a source. Uh, the, for example, uh, in our cases, uh, the uh, encoder hidden state is source. And the output switch connection token is, out, is target. So this is also uh, the called as a source target. Uh, attention. So very similar uh, formulation, uh, but we can actually represent the one side is cellular attention, which is just try to get the kind of long informa context information. And the other is to connect a different uh, sequence information uh, the, uh, in the, uh, the, which is used for the attention uh, the component in the uh, encoder decoder. Okay, I summarize the kind of a, a difference of the, uh, the cellular attention and the cross attention. So first, uh, the, the, the index is different, right? Uh, cellular attention is to consider the, uh, the same uh, the, uh, the, uh, input information and just converting it as it is. And then the, the cross attention is converting the information from the, uh, the source to target or uh, the, the input speech feature to the other uh, output token. So this is a difference. And the other difference uh, is that the query uh, in the cellular attention uh, came from the original input. But query in the cross attention cases, the query came from the output token. And also another uh, interesting difference is that this is actually partly I explained uh, in the previous section, since this is uh, predicting the next word. So attention pattern should be causal in the cross attention cases, uh, in the machine translation, the ASR cases. While cell attention cases, it is okay to be fully connected, fully connected. And the uh, computational cost also has some uh, slight difference. Uh, this is uh, the, the T times T because we need to consider uh, the uh, entire correlation of the input. And this one is actually, uh, the T is replaced with a J. This is the output length. But basically uh, the computation cost is quite similar. Just in the speech equation cases, since J output token is generally smaller than the input token length, uh, input feature length. So this one is slightly smaller. But basically we need to also consider uh, the, uh, the length of two sequences, uh, the multiplication of the lengths of the two sequences and so on. So this is the, uh, the only difference. 
And the, uh, note that uh, the computationally, if we algorithmically, uh, what we change is actually changing the query and just uh, the making the, uh, the, the causal attention. And in the previous uh, the, the, uh, lecture, I mentioned that this kind of causal uh, relationship can be e easily uh, the, the, uh, reflected by using the masking technique. So uh, this uh, the source target or cross attention versus self attention uh, has uh, only this uh, difference. Okay, so my lecture, I only, uh, the previously, I only using the uh, inner product, but actually there are several variants uh, the, of the attention uh, used uh, in uh, uh, history. And one of the uh, still well-known, uh, the widely used attention is that first uh, that we changing to the Q and uh, the uh, Q and H uh, to be the, uh, the same dimension. And then after the same dimension, we just adding them. We still keep the information of JT and making this one uh, to uh, make the entire um, score to be scalar. So we use this kind of neural network based uh, the, the scoring uh, the function uh, for the attention based approaches. And there are a lot of variations uh, of uh, this neural network based approaches. I uh, like using the component here uh, and so on. And they, similar to the, uh, the previous, uh, the, the inner product, anyway, the key component is to make a similarity, converting this kind of uh, the two values to be scalar value. But depending on the kind of uh, the two index, input and output, these are important. After that, we just normalize it and then making it at a, a probabilistic attention weight. Okay, so this is a kind of our, uh, the, the entire architecture uh, based on the LSTM. And this is one of the first approach of realizing attention-based uh, ASR. First part is uh, the converting the uh, observation to the, uh, the uh, hidden state vector. And this encoder, uh, mostly people are now using a CNN downsampling plus uh, the bidirectional LSTM. And the bidirectional LSTM part usually have a six layer or eight layer or something like that. Uh, by the way, again, I kind of skipped downsampling, but usually after the downsampling, this original language T can be actually, and this one is uh, the different. Uh, after the encoder, this can be smaller, shorter. And then decoder, uh, the people started to use the LSTM. And as an attention, uh, the people using the convolution-based neural network attention or uh, the simple neural network-based attention or inner product, depending on the kind of uh, uh, the method. And I listed uh, the three uh, the papers uh, the here. Uh, and actually, second one uh, was uh, the proposed by the uh, student in CME when uh, the, he was uh, the working with uh, people in Google. And this approach, this and this uh, attendant spell are uh, also very popular. Okay, this is the, uh, the, the one of the variation of the uh, LSTM based uh, the uh, attention ASR. Uh, and I will move to transformer, but do, do you have any questions about this part? Okay, if not, I will move to actually a transformer, which is more uh, like uh, the almost same structure uh, as uh, attention-based ASR, but the, uh, using the uh, cell attention operation everywhere. So first, uh, the, the, the attention-based ASR uh, based on the transformer 
uh, we usually using the same CNN down sampling. And then transform up encoder uh, is used, which I will explain a bit later. And the uh, decoder part, uh, we use the transformer decoder. And attention, uh, people usually use the inner product. And the transformer encoder is actually a little bit complicated. Not just self-attention or not just BLSTM. It's actually having uh, several components, uh, uh, including the uh, uh, positional embedding, multi-head attention, feed forward neural network. We also have a lot of arrow here, right? This actually is showing the residual connection. And uh, briefly explain about each of the component. Uh, the actually self attention operation is order agnostic. This means that purely self attention cases, if we switch the order of the observation from O1, O2 to O2, O1, this is the opposite, right? Uh, if we uh, the, the play the audio in the reverse side, of course, speech recognition uh, result should be changed. Right, but in the uh, the self attention, uh, these are exactly same in terms of the uh, the, the mathematical uh, in invariance uh, of the order. So actually, this property is not very suitable for uh, solving a sequence problem. Although this is very good in terms of getting the wrong context and making the everything to be parallelized. So to uh, solve this problem, uh, the simple technique is to just embedding the position information. And then uh, this uh, the new feature is actually having the information of the position so that this uh, the, the, uh, swapping doesn't uh, go to the uh, same result. So this uh, the, the approach actually care about the order now. So this other position embedding is quite important uh, for our sequential problem. And the next other uh, extension is merge head attention. Yes. For the positioning exercise, Yes, a very good question. Original transformer uh, using the uh, the the absolute ad position, and then later. If we move to the uh, the conformer, which I will uh, cover uh, in the later uh, uh, lecture, we actually we start speech people started to use uh, relative uh, positional encoding, but initially we used absolute one. Okay, and then the, the next uh, the extension is merge head. Uh, extension. Well, this is more like a, uh, the similar to the neural network uh, extension everywhere. Like, you know, we extend the convolution operation with a multiple uh, output, right? We just providing a lot of parameters. And the same things uh, that we also do in the attention part, which means that we try to kind of uh, model uh, several uh, attention. Uh, inside uh, the, uh, the one uh, self attention layer or one cross uh, attention layer. The reason behind of this multi extension is that uh, we would have a lot of attention pattern. Attention pattern should not be unique. So to model this kind of variation of the attention patterns, uh, people started to use a multi the, 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 the attention. And another reason that the merge head attention extension is used is that this is also still parallelized at the, the efficiently. And there is another component. This is feed for the neural network. This is attention is good to capture the context. And the feed for the uh, neural network is uh, good to capture the local information. Or we can also changing the dimension to be what we want. So due to that feed for the neural network is uh, usually inserted after the, uh, the attention block. And then 
There is a lot of kind of arrow here, which is residual connection. So this first residual connection means that the neural network can even skip this self attention. And this second uh, residual, uh, the, uh, the, the pass means that the, this neural network can even get the feed forward, uh, skip the feed forward neural network. This is generally uh, uh, the, the good to uh, get the kind of uh, the training to be stable. So this is a, a, a transformer uh, encoder. Uh, last uh, the lecture, I only explained about self-attention, but a transformer is not only for the self-attention, but the combining of these kind of techniques. So please remember that. So due to that, I also prefer not to use this network as a self-attention, but try to use a tra transformer to kind of uh, represent all of these kind of extensions, okay? And the decoder is basically similar. Uh, instead of uh, just using the CNN downsampling, we using a token enabling because a decoder will accept the history of the token. So it's not the speech information anymore. And then given uh, that uh, the, this uh, previous token as a condition, we can also feed uh, the encoder vector and then do the cross attention. And the cross attention is usually put in the middle uh, between the uh, self attention of the decoder and the feed forward uh, network and so on. So basically, each of the other uh, entire block of the encoder attention decoder uh, is not changed, but this uh, the each of the block is replaced uh, with uh, the uh, transformer encoder, a uh, transformer decoder, and so on. However, this is not the only change. I explained about the, the architectural changes, but actually transformer also changes a lot of other parts, especially related to the optimization. First, it's using the warm-up uh, optimizer this is based on Adam, but the learning rate is actually scaled, falsely scaled, first linearly increased, and then decreased like this. This kind of uh, the, the, the function would be depending on the implementation. Some people use cosine, some people using power, uh, and so on. And this uh, the, the learning rate schedule uh, the, was uh, the, the, the found to be very effective. Uh, for uh, solving the transformer, for optimizing the transformer. And the second important part is averaging. Actually, the warm up optimizer is uh, making the a learning curve to be very small if we have a more epochs. And then, actually, this change of the model becomes very smaller. In this uh, the very small fluctuation cases, we can safely average the model, uh, like a best at the 10 epochs or end of the 10 epochs, which actually making the parameter to be robust. And this actually improved the performance uh, of the speech recognition. In my experience, uh, the relatively 10%. This is very large, I would say. And another important part is batch size. Compared with the LSTM-based approaches, in the transformer, batch size should be very large, very, very large. And then uh, the, there is an awesome question. Uh, to make the batch size larger, we have to use a very large GP memory, right? But our GP memory is actually uh, the limited, so we cannot increase it. However, there is a way to virtually increase the batch size. This is called accumulation, a gradient accumulation technique. So this is actually quite simple. I just write the one of the, uh, the gradient uh, the ascent, uh, the, uh, the equations. We have a mini batch and then updating a parameter. And then we have a next mini batch we update the parameters. That is our usual uh, algorithm, right? However, instead of updating the parameter every mini batch, 
if we accumulate the mini bat, a gradient uh, obtained from the mini bat one and the mini bat two, this is actually uh, the exactly solving the gradient of the two mini batches, right? So from here to here, you could actually virtually increasing the batch size, okay? And uh, the, what we can do is just remember this one and then just accumulating it. So it doesn't have a so many, uh, require so many GPU memories. So this uh, the accumulate uh, gradation is a uh, very important technique. And many of the framework, uh, ESPNet or uh, the FASIC or whatever, they actually definitely have this other uh, gradient accumulation technique. May change the kind of option depending on their framework. But please uh, check it. And if your uh, model is not working due to the GPU memory, uh, you could actually also uh, tune, uh, play with this other uh, gradient accumulation. And another uh, the, the tips for the, uh, the transformer uh, is that anyway, it is depending on the self attention. So it's actually uh, the, it's a lot of memory. In the encoder, the memory size will be the, uh, the T square, which is uh, the down sample input length. It is usually very large. Cross attention also consumes the memory, T times J. J is the uh, output length. And the decoder, uh, in addition to the cross attention, we also uh, consume, uh, that since it also has a self attention for the decoder token, it consumes J square, uh, the GPU memory. So it's actually quite uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the GPU memory. Uh, the, uh, we use the GPU input in memory quite intensively. And then uh, the Many people, again, you know, faced on the issue that GPU memory is not enough. My suggestion is to check the length of your data. If, for example, the sentence is very long, of course, GPU memory would be uh, too large, right? So uh, the, uh, the, we should actually remove uh, this kind of uh, the very long sentences. By the way, do not only check input. You should also check output, right? Because it also depends on the output. So ESPNet actually has a check of this kind of length, input length and output length. And if the amount of data is too long, uh, sorry, the sentence length is too long, we just uh, the, the, uh, the discard uh, this sentence. And generally, uh, the long sentences are actually quite uh, the, the, uh, the annoying issue. And if you guys uh, the, the encounter this issue, my suggestion is that you should actually check the original data or the data preparation. Because in general, speech is, since you know, uh, the speech is generated by our speech production. So we cannot uh, the talk the sentence one minute without a breath, right? Usually more or less 10 seconds is uh, uh, the maximum language. So this 10 seconds is actually fine. 10 seconds means that the, uh, the thousand uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, frames and the uh, dust at the down sampling, it becomes 200 or something. And then that square uh, is 40,000. It is actually still at a general speech can be fit in the GPU memory. And if your problem doesn't fit the GP memory, probably your sentence is too long, which can be probably original your data is not well segmented or you made something wrong for the data preparation. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much.